All right, so let's chat a, bit, a little bit about uh, OGHQ. Uh, so, you know, my house is down that way, uh, down that road, hang a right. It's about a mile, a little bit, about a mile away. And so here's here's the, the building, brand new building. Uh, I have half of it, uh, so it's a 4,000 square foot building. I have this, this section here, this 2,000 square foot section. Uh, and then the other guy, BCBI, is a uh, Corvette guy who uh, has a lift, he has a Benpack lift and everything in there. So it's kind of a, a great match in that uh, essentially what happened is he built the building, he's a retiree, built the building and uh, and then built the second side, probably just to pay for the you know, the side that he's uh, that he's using. And so, you know, I'm leasing, leasing the, the this this building so that I can you know, build out the beginnings of Obsessed Garage headquarters. So front entrance is here. Uh, I guess I should unlock the door and go through there. But uh, anyway, this this garage, this roll up 10 foot door, it's a 10 by 10 door. This is my door. And so this is where um, obviously the cars will go in and out. And then this side door here. Uh, the great thing about this, I mean, it's the guy's own building. And so you just look at things like, you know, the sidewalks are dialed in, you know, the trim is nice. You know, everything is top notch. You know, all the soffits are clean. You know, everything's, the building's, you know, less than a year old. So that's, that's a nice, nice thing to have. So we're in the middle of, of drywalling, uh, I decided to uh, to drywall. There were there were some walls that were done, but not all of them. And so here's the structure. It was, so it's 2,000 square feet. It's 50 by 40, so 40 feet deep and 50 feet wide. Uh, so each one of these sections or whatever there, whatever that works out to be, you know, they're roughly 12 feet. And so Actually, I guess that, that math doesn't work anyway. Forget that part. So here we have the roll-up door. Uh, so it's again, 10 foot roll-up door. I just had it pre-wired. Uh, so we'll be putting in a, uh, a commercial uh, lift, commercial bend pack lift. I wonder if I can get away with a, uh, a normal 8500 because the commercial ones in my experience aren't as nice as the residential ones, uh, but maybe that's just because the ones I've seen haven't been done right or done correctly. And so all this here will be, um, you know, we'll have the garage door open, open or closer. Uh, there's a, you know, an entry switch turns on one bank of lights and the exterior light. Uh, and then along this wall, which we just drywalled, um, there were, you know, the beams that came down, and so I wanted this enclosed, and so this wall was open. These were already done, the office walls. That wall was open with an exposed, you know, air handler, so we can put a door on there. Uh, and then I just had them bring it up to, you know, whatever the studs went to, which was a 14 feet, I think. Uh, so we brought it up to 14 feet, or 13 and change, if you will, which is sufficient, I think. Uh, we have some supports, some uh, straps that we had to pull the wall out about two feet. So anyway, we'll be putting baseboards in, painting the walls uh, here this coming week. Uh, I had them put in outlets, but anyway, we'll go through all that in a second. So uh, on this wall here, so here, so here are my thoughts of you know what, what we'll most likely be doing here uh, in this location. So uh, flooring, uh, I'll have my normal boring slate gray. Uh, Swiss tracks will, will line the entire uh, the entire area. I'm not sure what I'm going to do in the office. It has some, you know, some cheap uh, laminate, which you know I'm not a fan of. I won't be doing Swiss tracks in the bathroom this time because we have tile in there, uh, so I won't have to I won't have to worry about that. But uh, but anyway, we're going to be painting and uh, painting the walls. My normal Harbor Gray, uh, Benjamin Moore AC25. So I'm going to paint all the walls. The ceiling will leave exposed. Uh, if I own the building, I'd probably drywall the ceiling as well, but I don't. I'm spending enough money as it is on, on the drywall here. So uh, anyway, we'll be painting the walls uh, uh, harbor gray from Benjamin Moore. Paint them, painting them flat. I don't like satin or sheens. All right now, this is kind of a off-white looking finish. So we'll be doing these white, I'll be, oh, I'm sorry, gray. We'll be doing the baseboards, you know, traditional. I use uh, duck white. I think it's duck white, or maybe it's dove white. So let's go look at it. I think it's called duck white. 
Yeah, here's White Duck. So there's the HG HGSW. It's a Sherwin Williams color. And then there's my Harbor Gray, which is uh, AC25. So painting the walls, doing the slate, slate gray and black bordered Swiss tracks. And along this wall here is where the cabinet array is going to be. Uh, and so I'm going to be doing most likely uh, sonic cabinets. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a roughly 20, probably 22 foot array of cabinets here along the wall. It's filled with drywall dust in here. I'm dying. Obviously that hose holder will be coming off the wall. I'm probably going to bring my, uh, my Panasonic Plasma here. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'm thinking about whether I'm going to do that or not. That would go, you know, sort of centered up on the wall. But I'm definitely bringing uh, all my, I have my monitor audio gold reference, which will go on the left and right side. Uh, left and right side. Uh, I have a new JL sub, uh, JL uh, Fathom F113 that will go in here as well. And so we'll have the speakers flanking center channel on top of the cabinet. All the electronics will be in, you know, one of the cabinets, just like normal. We'll be foam lining with all the sonic tools uh, in here as well. So it'll be a good way to test out the sonic products, and uh, I'm going to be start representing them as well. Uh, start selling them if they, assuming they let me still. Uh, but as of SEMA, uh, I think um, Scott and the guys at uh, at Sonic are going to let me represent and you know offer the products to the obsessed garage store uh, the or the whole tool line and cabinet line as well so we'll have the speakers maybe the plasma uh, or some sort of display uh, and then cabinet array uh, along this wall and the thought process there is then that will sort of cover the entire place you know, because all the shipping and stuff is going to go back here. Uh, so rather than doing, because the door is such an odd sort of offset in the, in the building, rather than attempting to symmetrically manage the cabinets over here, uh, I wanted to do a larger cabinet array and one or two. Plus, I didn't want to interfere with the potential for you know, storing product over in this area. And so that's why the cabinet array is going to go along this wall. Right here uh, in this section, so somewhere, and I'm gonna just gonna have to get the lift here and lay it out after I sort of tape out where the cabinets are gonna go. But I'm doing a, not an in-ground, but an above, you know, an on-ground scissor lift. Uh, I'm probably gonna do the twin bush. Uh, the new spawn guys haven't called me back, so I guess shame on them, uh, we'll see. Uh, but uh, I'm probably gonna do the, the, uh, the twin bush, and I'm gonna push it this way, not up against the wall. This wall will be essentially bare. Uh, well, I don't want to have anything in the way, but I'll probably be, you know, five or six feet off the wall. So notice I put a, I ran a 30 amp service, I ran a box there so that we can put our, uh, our, our station or our control unit, you know, somewhere in that vicinity. I have to, can, can I have to kind of get it in here, lay it on the floor and see where it is. I mean, just this section alone is bigger than like a normal garage. So, um, although it might look like I'm tucking it in the corner, I think once we, you know, once I get it lined up, it'll, you know, look a lot different than, than, you know, than you're thinking. So, or than I'm thinking anyway. So that's where the where the lift is going to go. Over here uh, is where I'm going to display, and you know, the, comp the air compressor is not going to run all that often. And if it does run often, I'll do a separate tank. Uh, but I wired a 30 amp, uh, dedicated 30 amp, uh, 220, 30 amp, and then uh, also a, a dedicated uh, 15 amp for the air dryer. That's going to run to a knife switch, which will go right on the wall right here. And so we'll have the the Jenny compressor right next to that mounted. Above it will be the will be the air dryer. Uh, below it will be where the where the alto is or the the regulator. And then I'll probably run straight up the wall, and then that's when we'll distribute all the Prevost piping throughout. And I'll explain that in a second. So that's where the Jenny compressor is going to go. And so this section here, there really won't be much going on, at least not right away. Um, but you know, the cars. What will probably happen is I'll have a car, you know, sort of in this vicinity, maybe a car on the lift, and then I have this whole area open. 
because there will be, my guess is we'll have pallets and stuff that'll be coming in this location all the time, you know, throughout the day. Uh, so I want to keep it open. I want to keep most of the work, you know, I want to keep this wall symmetrical with cabinets. And I even thought about, you know, bringing the cabinets all the way down and making a turn. But I think what I want to do, again, I want to keep the audio somewhat symmetrical in this building, although it's pretty echoey. I don't know. I just I just feel like having a straight 20 foot array will look cleaner here. That's that's what I'm what I'm what I'm envisioning. So, but then this section will largely be open so that we can pull things in and out, you know, with pallet jacks and who knows, maybe someday getting a a uh, some sort of um, whatever you call those things, a forklift, forklift, so we can get things off off a truck easier. So as we're getting our bearings here of the building. So my initial thought, this section here will be product storage. And so what I'm gonna do is do some sort of, I'm gonna start doing my research here. Uh, there is a you know, emergency light and then we have, and I put, had a couple outlets put in just because. But there's going to be, uh, in this entire back wall here will be, you know, palletized uh, or, you know, pallet ready uh, cabinets, or not cabinets, but shelving. And so what I'm intending to do is do a row against the wall here. We'll leave enough, you know, I don't know, four or whatever the standard four, maybe it's eight feet, uh, eight foot row. And then we're gonna put another identical row right down here, probably right off of that wall. Uh, and so you'll, you'll, you'll be able to sort of walk on this side and walk in between uh, and that ought to be you know an ample amount of storage for now my guess is we'll do i'm not sure how we'll do it if we'll do 10 foot racks of ladders i'm going to do some research on that here in the next couple of weeks or i guess it'll be a couple of months to figure out what i'm going to do but anyway that's where this will be like product mecca right here of uh of you know what what that's going to look like uh, obviously i'm going to have a door on the on the air handler and for air conditioning this is a one and a half ton uh handler and uh the, you know, and so this 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 is feeding these two little rooms over here in the bathroom three little rooms and so we're going to use this unit to probably going to put a vent here and then here to help you know dump into the into the unit as well as uh, I had just had this pre-wired right up top here you know above the air compressor is going to be a two ton uh, mini split you know super efficient mini split so we're going to have you know conditioned space and as you can see it's all you know it's all insulated that the uh, landlord the guy who owns the building is paying for that so I kind of negotiated with him and said hey I need AC he said well I'll pay for that uh, but I'm not paying for drywall, so I'm paying for the drywall and the painting, you know, to paint it uh, the way I want. The Swiss tracks will be all in, throughout here as well. <clears throat> so then what I'm probably going to do is do a shipping cabinet. I'll probably do something like, I don't know what I'm going to do, whether it's Sabre cabinets or Listar or something like that. So there will be a shipping station here. And there will also be a shipping station here along this wall, you know, where I'll have a, uh, probably a Mac. I don't know, I'll probably have a, I don't know what I'll have. Um, probably an iMac, like a 21 and a half iMac on, on both of these. Uh, I'm going to do all Apple. Uh, so it'll, this will be an Apple distribution center, if you will. I'm going to adopt Apple right in the beginning. I know some of you Windows guys are freaking out, but... Uh, that's what I'm going to do, uh, and so this area here will be um, where you'll have some sort of, you know, the, the boxes, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do there, uh, but some 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 system set up where that this will probably be the main shipping area because we'll stage stuff or product to go out over in this area right by the door, so UPS can walk in and pick up, and hopefully someday we'll be fortunate enough that will fill up this whole building and then we'll need to set up pallets and then maybe someday have to have uh, a new facility where we'll have to have a, a FedEx truck. You know, 18 wheeler will be filling up every day like, like Adams has. So we'll probably also in this area here, once I get this all set up, we'll probably do some sort of packing table in the middle. 
uh, something that you know structurally fits, something that looks really cool. Uh, but in the beginning, I, I, I doubt we'll do that right away. Uh, but we'll probably have some sort of like four foot or you know maybe maybe 12 foot long by eight foot wide big big shipping area because this whole area here in the center I don't have anything planned for. You know I plan to bring the the uh, the the you know the shelves out to this beam. Uh, and then over, and so that stays largely in this footprint over here, uh, and so we keep this open for now, uh, so that as you're, you know, walking in the front door, this, you know, this, you'll see the cabinet array, you know, unimpeded, but again, I don't want to waste all this space. This will probably become the big giant packing table in the center, which I'll, I'll do something really cool there. And then the idea here is that we'll have room to push cabinets and I know the compressor is going to get in the way <clears throat> but we'll have room to push the cabinets all the way over to here and then eventually my guess is we'll end up pushing my lift and all that stuff out of here hopefully sooner rather than later you know if this becomes as big as it I guess it could <clears throat> so over here um, this is where we're going to be testing the on wall so I'm going to be doing this here shortly so I have it stubbed out uh, for uh, doing the new Krenzla on-wall system, the K1622. So I have this all blocked off here so that I can do a, uh, do the CR spotless, hose reel, shelf mounted, K1122. And I'm actually having imported the K1622TS or total stop. And then not, not only that, but I'm intending to have imported, so we'll see how long this takes, <clears throat> but I want to I want to change the the output and change so change the wobble plate change the pump on the 1622 to where it stops so it's a total stop so you release the trigger it lets go uh, and then it also operates at the same volume as the 1122 so we go from 1.6 gallons per minute up to 2.1 gallons per minute at at 1400 psi that would be I think a significant upgrade for washing cars over the current 1622, and I think the pricing is gonna be fairly similar, uh, but I'm working out all the kinks on that here. I'll show you the, the product here in a second, but I'm gonna be having a whole video series on that you know, coming out. Um, nothing really going over here. There's the drain there, which will cut that off and cap it. Uh, another power outlet, so this will be open for I don't know what, but who knows, uh, but I don't have anything planned for, for that area right there. Um, shoot, and that could even become a little little shipping table or something like that if I end up with a bunch of people in here shipping stuff. So um, that's the plan there. I, I, the, I'm assuming in the beginning that you know all the boxes and stuff will be stored. You know all our boxing equipment will be stored uh, on, our, on our shelving and then we'll also have uh, we have room up here uh, where there's a there's a door or a you know there's attic stairs right here you can go up and so this whole area up top here will be for overflow overflow product overflow uh, boxes and things like that so what i'm intending to do in here this is a little little entry all right so this is where you know, i guess people would walk in uh, if i you know if, if people start coming here i don't know if you know, like people that are, that are in town my guess is we'll start to see people wanting to drop by all right so this wall right here will be as you walk in will be I think we'll have an example of all of our different metal shelving options with, you know, have the wheel cleaning package and the tire cleaning package and the decont decontamination polishing and all that stuff will be on the shelves here on display, just mainly so I can look at it. I think it's cool. And then maybe do some sort of example of Sabre cabinets here, depending on what I end up doing with the shipping table. Uh, but this will be a cool little area where I'll have some, you know, obsessed garage logo stuff maybe somehow hang some shirts here or something like that i don't know but we'll see that's that's not uh, that's not the most important thing and then i don't know what we're going to do in here but this will be you know probably the office uh where my dad will be you know running the operation my intention is not to have my parents shipping stuff forever uh that he would you know be all doing all the purchasing and stuff from here at least you know, at least for now um oh other couple of things going on here uh, lighting uh, so I'm going to be replacing all of these. These are probably 3200, they're probably 2700 traditional yellow lights. 
Uh, it might be 3,000, uh, but these are all coming out. I'm going to be putting 5,000 Kelvin in here. Uh, I think 6,500 or my normal 6,000 or 6,500 is a little, uh, a little aggressive to be in standing in here all day. Uh, so I'm going to do 5,000 Kelvin in here. I'm going to be doing all the new lights, which I just added to my store. Uh, so we'll be doing all probably six bulb fixtures. And I might just hang them from the same chains. I'm not sure. I'm gonna. I'm about to go to Home Depot right now to look for some some chains to see. You know, see what I can do. Um, but I might, you know, change out one or two and then kind of see how it goes to see how. I don't. There's. It's kind of shadowy in here at places. Now that we have the drywall in, there's a little less shadowing. Uh, you know, the lighting isn't terrible in here, but I think I think we're gonna make it. You know, much better. Uh, Prevost, uh, Prevost is going to run. I'm going to run a whole loop around the whole structure. And so I'm going to be doing both electric drop down and uh, compressed air drop down in multiple locations. So I think I'm going to have one somewhere around here. So somewhere off the front of the lift, somewhere on the back of the lift. Uh, and then strategically throughout the facility, you know, I want to have one either, either over each shipping station um, so that you could pull that down and, you know, do whatever needs to be done. Uh, one over here, and so I'm going to run a loop around the building. Um, be sure to make a video series. I mean, this is really, honestly, the most, the fun part about this is this is going to be my testing grounds to play with stuff, test it. And, then, you know, store an extra car or two here, you know, when I need to. So anyway, we're working on, uh, I'm going to get this painted. Uh, I'm not painting it. I'm going to have the guy paint it. Um, you know, I could paint it, I'm sure. I just don't want to. Uh, I'd be better off doing other things. And whereas in the past, I would have been in here painting this stuff all myself. I would have been drywalling this myself. Uh, I just I just can't do that stuff anymore. Uh, I can, but I, 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 you know, I'd be wasting time and energy doing that. I'd be better off doing things that I enjoy doing much more. So say what you want about uh, my hands not getting dirty. Uh, I'm at a place where I don't have to do that. So I'm not going to do it and I'm not going to feel bad about it. We've kind of, there's been this weird stigma online that you have to do everything yourself or else you're not cool. Well, call me not cool. I'm not doing it. I probably won't do the lights myself either. Um, so we'll see. First of all, I don't like heights. Second of all, it would take an electrician half the time, quarter the time. But anyway, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what that looks like. You know, the lighting in here is is right at the borderline of is of acceptable, and uh, and we'll, we're going to upgrade that substantially. I don't want it to be so bright that it hurts, like my wash bay, uh, but but we're gonna we're gonna get it dialed in. So anyway, stay tuned for uh, 1622 install uh, the Jenny compressor with the air rev um, um, drying system uh, for, for me to have like the most sophisticated, uh, most overkilled uh, tire filler on the planet. <laughs> I'm gonna be testing all kinds of air tools, all kinds of electric tools, sonic tools. That's all gonna go down in here. You're gonna learn about, uh, you're gonna learn about shelving as I learn about it. Uh, that's gonna be, that's gonna be fun. Uh, I'm sure I'll be putting some cool, like, strategic things on the wall in here. Uh, I want to start hosting different events and things here uh, as well. You know, occasionally, you know, have OGHQ meets. Uh, and then what my hope or my, my, my guess is, is that I will outgrow this facility very quickly. Uh, you know, I have a, I, I would guess, I don't know, who knows? I'm not going to make that prediction. Uh, but uh, but we'll see how long I'm here and we'll 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 enjoy this while we can. It's 2,000 square feet. I'm paying just to cue you in. I'm paying what 20 2,300 bucks, 2,316 I think of all in. I'm gonna have to get uh, I'm gonna have to get my insurance dialed in for commercial location, uh, and I have to do some other things to uh, make sure that I'm up to standard. Uh, my parents' house is for sale. As soon as that sells, they'll be down here and shipping from this facility. So, anyway, thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of this, and uh, I'll keep you up to date. There's some really cool stuff going to be going down in here. <clears throat> so this will be my proving grounds for what my garage at my house will look like uh, someday if I'm fortunate enough to uh, fall on uh, 300 grand to build the thing. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more crazy.
force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor, to the floor, to the floor.